Welcome back to College Conversations. I'm Dr. Fedor and I help you navigate college. Today, I have with me a special guest. His name is Larry Boyer, and he's the author of The Robot in the Next Cubicle, What You Need to Know to Adapt and Succeed in the Automation Age. Larry is also the founder and president of Success Rockets LLC and New Horizons Advisors. Larry is a speaker and consultant helping everyone from high school students to business executives understand the nature of the fourth industrial revolution and the disruption it causes to both businesses and people. Larry, thank you so much for joining me. Before I get started, I want to remind you to please hit subscribe and share this video with others who also might find it helpful and useful. So Larry, I've asked you today to College Conversations to explain to me what is cryptocurrency? Because I really just don't understand it. You know, there, there's a lot to be confused about it because you'll also hear people talk about, I believe in blockchain, but I don't believe in cryptocurrency. Um, that's a common uh, thing. And the problem is, is you can't really separate the two. Uh, cryptocurrency is the exchange that's used for a particular blockchain technology. People don't often uh, kind of understand that, right? So when you're if you're using a cryptocurrency like the Ethereum network or any of the other hundreds of them, they usually have some kind of a business project underlying them with a purpose that's involved with them. Any legitimate cryptocurrency project or blockchain project will have what's called a white paper. And you can usually go to their website and find it and download it and they'll explain what the purpose of it is. And so I would suggest everybody who's even thinking about getting involved with cryptocurrencies, go and find one. Probably the easy ones, you know, are the big ones, you know, like Ethereum. You can go onto the Ethereum webpage and download the white paper and understand what it's all about. Now, sometimes these are going to be a little bit technical, but you should be able to get the idea about what the purpose is, right? And so blockchain technologies can be used for all kinds of things. You know, they're essentially a, a, a record of transactions, so almost like a, an accounting system. And they're transparent, so they're usually open to the public so that you can see every transaction that's occurring. You don't necessarily know who the participants are because the IDs are basically masked behind some kind of thing, but you can see how every particular exchange has been made throughout the entire history, going back from the first ones. You can see when it was minted or mined to who it's been sent to back and forth. You can see like who the top holders. So there's a lot of aggregate transparency about that, right? So, and that's one of the things that you can see there. So when you're talking about cryptocurrencies, the other thing that people are missing about with it is it's like currencies, right? These are like foreign exchange rates. So it's not dissimilar to doing things like trading euros and yen and, and things like that, which are also highly volatile and confusing to people. So one of the things for better or worse that has happened with cryptocurrencies, it's new. People have a lot of faith in it in the long run. Some people understand that they're volatile, but they don't necessarily understand what that means. And they don't necessarily appreciate you know, how, how they can move around. And, and again, because most of them are still pretty small, that also leaves them susceptible to manipulation, even if the project is legitimate. And the other thing to keep in mind with these pr projects too, is that you have to think of them as like, startups, startup companies. So if you invest in a pre-IPO startup and it fails, does that mean it was fraudulent? No, it just means that it's one of the most of startups that fail, right? And so, and we've seen that happen with a, a lot of them, especially if you look back to the last time crypto kind of boomed up, there are lots of projects that were put out there and then people were hopeful on some of them. And then, you know, they, a lot of them went under. So that's true, right? But it's no different than any other startup. And I think that's another point that people don't understand, right? So it's, you have to appreciate the, there's risk that's involved okay. and there's the potential for manipulation that occurs because they are small and they are essentially publicly traded because you can go on different markets like Coinbase and others and, and trade them. So you're susceptible to those, whereas, you know, with a stock, if you're to buy a stock in a startup company, most people can't buy a stock in a startup company because you have to be an accredited investor. So that creates additional risks that most people aren't aware of or understand. So it's like a startup and it's like trading currencies, both of which are volatile. You can make lots of money on them and you can lose lots of money on them. Well, that helps me feel a little bit better, but honestly, I'm still kind of confused. Sure. 
for the average investor out there, there's a lot of potential for scams and things like that because people are thinking, oh, cryptocurrency, it's, I have to get on that bandwagon. It's the latest thing. I'm going to make a lot of money and, and all of this. And, and I know you can't you know, prevent that from happening all of the time, but what are some of the warning signs that might tell me this yeah. crypto offering is a scam? So usually it's not the crypto itself that's a scam. Usually it's people talking about it and getting you to send it. So a very common one is on Twitter where people will say, Hey, I'm Elon Musk. He says, you know, send me one Bitcoin here and he's going to send you two Bitcoins back. And people do that. Yeah. Like why on earth would Elon Musk do that? I mean, that's a scam, but that has nothing to do with Bitcoin, right? So people are taking advantage of things like that. Or, or people are also not doing, taking precautions because when you hear about things, people getting their information stolen and stuff, a lot of times what they do is they they have these things called hard wallets. They're like a, a hard drive they have plugged into their computer. Um, a lot of people will say, not your keys, not your crypto, so you don't own it. So they want it downloaded someplace where they can physically hold it as opposed to on a internet platform like Coinbase. And they'll put it on these hard drives, but they'll leave them plugged into their computer. Well, all it takes is you to get your computer hacked, and then they have access to that hard drive and everything on it, and they steal it. The bigger problems are, are not so much about scams. They're all about the basic, um, you know, cybersecurity and protecting your assets. And, and people will do that. You know, MetaMask is, is another popular one where people use it a lot. And they, again, leave their things open. They leave them protected because they want to do things like live trading and all that. Well, if you don't have good you know, antivirus protection, you don't have good firewalls, you don't follow safety protocols on your computer, they get sucked away. Uh, the other thing I would say, just in terms of scams, you have to be careful of where they can happen is with the platforms themselves that store them. Okay, so in the US, what, what you'll see is there's a lot of companies around the world where you can buy and sell and trade crypto. Most of them actually don't allow Americans to trade on them. So they have things called know your customer laws in the US where you actually have to prove who you are. So if you join Coinbase, for example, you're going to have to show who you are. You're going to have to hold up a picture of your driver's license with you okay. so that they can see, okay, that looks like you in your driver's license yeah. and take pictures of the front and the back so that you can prove who you are. A lot of these international ones don't have those kinds of protections. That also means they're one more vulnerable to being hacked but they also themselves could be the scam themselves where people just deposit all the things and put it on there. Again, not the cryptocurrency, yeah. it's the platform. So what you have to do is be careful that you're using reputable platforms and, and you want to look at those and, and see and understand them. That's the thing. And you know, people you know, want to trade and get in on cryptocurrencies, like whatever the latest hot cryptocurrency is, right? They're not available on the big platforms or not available to Americans specifically. Um, so you can't get them unless you're doing some kind of workaround on the internet to go onto one of these platforms where you're really not allowed to be, and you could try to trade them um, and get in on them early before they they skyrocket. That makes you vulnerable. So I want to go back to talking about blockchain for just a minute because it made me think about the supply chain and how all of us are being affected by the supply chain. And I thought, well, Maybe having the blockchain makes it easier to assign blame. <laughs> Does it make it easier to say, okay, where exactly is the bottleneck? And if I can trace everything, you know, back to the beginning of the trade and everything and the whole supply chain, is it a way to, um, to find out where the bottleneck is and assign blame? It, it is. In fact, you know, there's a very famous uh, study, I think it was done with IBM and Walmart, where they wanted to do just check on, you know, uh, food product recalls and identify like where was the problem, right? right. So let, let's say there was a bacterial infection and making people sick. Oh yeah. And, and identify the batch of it. So they did a, a test where they tracked some products using the blockchain that they had set up and then using the traditional method. Using the traditional method took like almost a month for them to figure out where this product came from, uh, mm -hmm. right? So they knew that this, there was this batch of you know vegetables or fruits that. Right. Uh, that was bad, but it took a month to do that. 
they had it with the blockchain technology because it gets identified every place where there's an exchange, mm -hmm. they were able to identify where it came from in three seconds. This made me think of a few years ago before COVID when there was a bad batch of romaine lettuce or something. And for a while, Wendy's and McDonald's, nobody had romaine lettuce because for some reason it was yep. tainted or something. It was making people sick and they and they went back and and that, you know, kind of made me think of, of blockchain and the, and the supply chain. Yeah. So could you tell me some advice about cryptocurrency, where I should start or just start reading? I, I know you gave me some homework to do, or should I not? Should I just leave that to the experts? There is no such thing as an expert, and you're never going to be able to know who an expert is. And anybody who knows a lot about it will be the first person to tell you that they are not an expert because it is all new. I would highly recommend anybody who's looking at them, and I, I should say there's a difference between being an investor and a speculator, um, and that's true with stocks or cryptocurrencies, and most people don't understand this either. Right? An investor is somebody who actually understands the business and the product. Most people, even with stocks, are speculators because we're just looking at price movements and are they going up and I'm gonna have it go up, right? That's right. That has no skill, right? If you want to actually invest in a company, you are reading like their balance sheets, you are reading their management statements and where they're going and what their business plan is, and you have signed up and you say, yes, I believe in this. Right. We're not looking at the CEO and saying, oh, I like that CEO because he's really cool or he's doing this mm -hmm. or he's really active on Twitter or anything else. You are not saying, well, I like the stock price because it's been going up a lot because you don't know if it's going to go back down. You don't know what it's going to do in different economic climates, right? Mm -hmm. If you're an investor, you understand all of that. If you are a speculator, you don't. You just, you're just chasing mm -hmm. returns. And so that happens with, with cryptos as well. So with, if you want to be an investor, read the white papers, listen to the people who are like the executives and the teams and, of developers and what they are doing, you know, like uh, Vitalik Buterin for Ethereum. And, and there are others out there, right? They all have people who are the, the are leaders. They explain what they're doing. They explain what what they're trying to do. You may or may not agree with them. That's part of what your choice of investing is. And then you have to also understand, you know, the markets are going to go up and down. The other thing to keep in mind, especially, you know, in the times that we are now, again, that people don't appreciate this. These are, again, early stage products, just like an early stage startup. People are basically betting on their returns in the future, not what they're worth today, right? Most of these things are still barely used for anything today, right? They're anticipating big profits in the future. Anytime you have rising interest rates, by definition, future cash flows are worth less. And so the price comes down. That works. That's what's happening with cryptocurrencies today. It's what's happening with the stock markets today. The more the interest rates go up, mm -hmm. any kind of high growth company, again, whether it's with cryptocurrencies or you're looking at technology companies, their stocks are getting hammered because of that. And it has nothing to do with whether the company is any good or not. It has nothing right. to do with whether the product is good or not. It is just simple math. Well, Larry, I think I'm sufficiently um, confused so far. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a long-term thing with me understanding cryptocurrency. Thanks so much for joining me. Please remember to hit subscribe and share this video with others who might also want to learn about cryptocurrency and the magic of that. And remember to keep learning.